Why is this book so boring? Listen to me when I say they will never go away. Run, run. Welcome to the jungle. And the movie. If you haven't checked out my website yet, I decided to do a color theme for the TBRs and the recommended uh, books for this year. I have other themes and I have other plans for the next following years, but I kind of want to read up a little bit more and kind of refresh my memory on some of the books to have on those recommended. So I'm just saving those for like a later date, but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be good. Stay tuned. And if you've already visited my website, you might be thinking, the cover does not look blue. You're right. It was not a part of my January TBR. It was my October's TBR. It is taking me forever to finish this book and the frustrating part is that it wasn't that bad. Like I was talking to some people online and a lot of them like DNF'd it because it was just too long. And I watched the movie recently and the movie is actually what spurred me to read the book because I figured that the book would be better. If you haven't seen the fifth wave movie, the movie should not have been a movie. It reminded me a lot of that series, The 100 on Netflix. And I don't even like that show because it is so long and so drawn out. But a lot of other people seem to like it. And the fifth wave, Mm, not so much. And I mean, I figured with the movie, their problem is that so much is just crammed into it. And if they were going to convert the book, they should have done it into a TV show because there's just so much going on. But at the same time, while there's so much going on, nothing is really happening. So I decided to read the book for clarification. And can I just say, writers, if you're planning on writing a 500 page book and you have to make the love triangles and the love stories and the multiple perspectives the added filler in order to get that page count so you can sell your book for $28? Just don't. I'm sick and tired of having to wade through all this filler and all this bullshit that I could care less about just to get to the meat of the story. But if you haven't read it and if you haven't watched the movie, it's basically a story about a young girl named Cassie. Cassie is short for Cassiopeia, by the way, not Cassandra. She makes it clear to point that out. Her nickname being Mayfly. I don't care. I don't even know what Cassiopeia is. Of course, of course it's Greek mythology. I feel like some of these writers just took a course or they were forced to read the Iliad in high school and they felt like they needed to do something with that information. they liked it or not. Oh, I think I get it. It's because it's a star constellation. They did point that out in the book too, because you know, get it, it's an alien invasion and they come from the stars and the sky and everything that they thought they knew everything about. And it's just... So Cassiopeia apparently boasts about her unrivaled beauty. Which makes sense and it doesn't make sense. So the fifth wave, just to catch you up in case you haven't heard of it, the fifth wave is a part of an alien invasion and it was basically the fifth and final step before they come in and take everything over. Now, the biggest problem with the book and the movie is that they were extremely short-lived. They tried to cram everything in at once. The movie does it Pretty sure I was wrapping paper. So the movie tries to cram everything in like you would a show, except you only have 90 minutes to do it. And the book is already cramming in everything it can through monologue of the main character. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves is when you keep switching points of view from other characters. In my opinion, if you are going to do that and you have to do that to make your book 500, 600 pages long, write another book, write a, start on a spin-off series from another viewpoint of another character. There was no point to this except for giving the perspective from the kid that had to go with the military and the perspective of Cassie after she was separated from her brother. My brother ended up going with them to the military to train and spoiler alert, the army guys were actually the bad guys. 
I guess I really don't have to give you a spoiler alert because the book kind of spoils that in the beginning anyways. It's one of those things where the movie was smart enough to actually save it to the end before, you know, kind of announcing that, oh yeah, by the way, the good guys are actually the bad guys. And the book just does it in the very fucking beginning. So the whole point of changing perspectives is you're following these other characters through their training and everything, but since you're already aware of what's happening, you already know that they're fighting for the bad guys. It kind of ruins the momentum and it kind of ruins the build up so that when it finally hits at the end, while the other characters, while well, they come to realize that they've actually been fighting alongside the aliens and killing human beings, it should be as much of a surprise for us as it is for them. The whole premise centers around Cassie trying to go find Find her brother after they were separated and after she watched her father get murdered and she was almost murdered and some other greaseball kid was murdered by aliens so she already knows what's going on we already know what's going on so the whole story is supposed to center around her trying to find Sammy and trying to get to this base to get to her brother. What I feel like the book should have done is to start us out on the first or at least the second wave. Because coming in at the last and final wave, you feel like you're at the end of a series. You already feel like there's so much going on that you should be aware of who these characters are and everything. And don't get me wrong, there's plenty of time and plenty of filler to set up who these characters are and try to try to build the connections from one character to another. But it's like it's like the story gets cemented in focusing on those relationships between the characters and it like it's like it halts abruptly and you really don't you really don't care you know those kinds of books where you got so much story and things were starting to look good and then it just stops dead center and you're just waiting and waiting but it never fucking goes anywhere so another one of the twists is when cassie gets shot now in the movie this guy protected her from getting shot from another alien, but he was still stalking her. Um, in the book, he ends up being the one that shot her, brings her back to his place, and he's having this conflict because he's actually an alien. Either way, he's stalking her and spying on her outside her bedroom, read her fucking diary, and he's trying to basically keep her in place because the outside world is not safe enough. And somehow she ends up falling in love with him and falling in love with him. But somehow she ends up falling in love with him. And even after she finds out who he is and what he did and what he's trying to do, she's still in love with him. I mean, I think it's just pure desperation at this point. Meanwhile, at the base, her brother is amongst many other kids that have been basically kidnapped by these people claiming to be the army, but they're really aliens in disguise. They don't realize it, that it's all, it's all fake and it's all the chip making them really really see things differently. So they're going around and they're just killing innocent people. This sounds like a Black Mirror episode too.